Welcome to example 5. We're asked to determine the wavelength of a photon and an electron. Now, uh, this question is quite interesting in that photons and electrons, to solve these two wavelengths, are not going to be uh, the same method because photons and electrons are fundamentally different from one another. Let's take a look at that. Let's write over here the photon. Okay, and over here on the right side we'll write electron. Okay, now in this particular problem, what do they have the same? It has the same energy. So E over here is 25 electron volts, and for the electron it's also 25 electron volts. What about the, the, the mass? What's the mass of an electron? You can look that up. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kilograms. What about a photon? Mm. You know, hopefully you recall when we talked about photons, photons have no rest mass. All right, so there's no mass. It means you can't use, for example, momentum equals mv for a photon because it doesn't have any mass at all. How about the uh, speed of an electron? Are we told the speed of electron? No, we don't know that speed. What about the speed of a photon? How fast do photons travel at? Well, they're light, right? They travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. So it's equal to C, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. What, about, what do you think the speed of electron is going to be? Is it going to be the same speed? Hopefully you realize it should be a speed that is less than that. You can't have anything that has mass that is traveling at the speed of light or even faster than that. It all matter must travel less than the speed of light. This comes from the special theory of relativity which is not really part of this course, but is important to know anyhow. Okay, so we're asked to find the de Broglie wavelength, or just the wavelength, actually, of these two uh, things. Uh, for a photon, well, we know the speed and we know the uh, energy, uh, and there must be some relationship for photons. We know that the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Now, we're looking for the wavelength, by the way. I guess if we find the frequency, we could probably find the wavelength because we know the speed that the photon travels at. So yeah, let's let's continue with this. So the frequency would be E divided by Planck's constant. Now, E, you have a choice here. I suppose you could convert this into joules. Remember that one electron volt is equivalent to one point. 6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. Or you, you could just leave it as 25 electron volts and then just utilize Planck's constant, the one that is not, not I mean, your H, you could use like 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 34, uh, and that's in joule seconds. Uh, but I wouldn't be tempted to use that because I'd have to convert this energy into joules. I might use the other version that you'll see on your constant sheet, which is 4.14 times 10 to the power of negative 15 in electron volts. And you see there's electron volts times seconds. So if I put that down at the bottom here, 4.14 times 10 to the power of negative 15 electron volts times seconds, you can see that the electron volts will cancel out. And so this gives us a frequency of the photon of 6.04 times 10 to the power of 15. And we have 1 over seconds, which is really just hertz. Now, since we know the frequency, we also know how fast all photons travel in a vacuum, which is the speed of light, we could find the wavelength. Remember that C, or speed, is equal to frequency times wavelength. So the wavelength can be determined by taking the speed of light and dividing it by the frequency. So that's 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second divided by the frequency 6.04 times 10 to the power of 15 uh, hertz, which is really 1 over seconds. This gives us a wavelength of 4.97 uh, times 10 to the power of negative 8 meters, which will convert to roughly the same answer here, and this might be a little bit off. Maybe we used as a speed of light at 2.998 times 10 to the power of 8. Now, there are other ways of doing it. Um, if you think about it, you might try on your own and say, well, maybe I, I want to find the momentum. You could 
you know, I'll just put over here R, you could, or you could find E equals, um, hmm, uh, maybe you could use HC over lambda, right? And, and HC is given in your uh, constant sheet as being 1.24 times 10 to the power of 3 electron volts. In fact, that's a lot faster. I should have done it that way. So it's going to be HC over E, and you go 1.24 times 10 to the power of 3 um, electron volts times nanometers, and then divide by our electron volts at 25, and you get a wavelength of 49.6 nanometers, which is actually this answer right here. You can see there's going to be some discrepancies between your answers due to the constants being rounded. Okay, there's a lot of ways to do it. Now. You could also use E equals uh, momentum times speed, and then use the Broglie's equation, which is uh, wavelength equals H over the momentum. I mean, a lot of variety of ways of doing it. Okay, so that is the photon method here. Let's now concentrate on the electron. Uh, if we want to find the wavelength of something that is particle-like, like an electron, uh, we use de Broglie's equation, wavelength equals Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And this is an object that has mass, so we can use uh, for momentum, m times v because it has mass. You can't use this, by the way, over here because photon doesn't have any rest mass. So we have Planck's constant listed here. We know the mass electron right here. It looks like we have to find how fast this electron is going. How are we going to find the speed of this electron? You have to think about this carefully. If this is this energy here, um, and we need to determine how fast it's going. We've got to make an assumption that this energy is in what form? Well, this is really in kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. So we can find the velocity by taking the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy and dividing by the mass. Now, there is a common mistake that people will make here. Units, 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 I find, is the most typical mistake that people make in this modern physics unit. You need to do what? Now, you got mass that is in kilograms here. Right? And you've got a 2 here. What's the problem? The kinetic energy is in electron volts. That's not good. Remember, we want a velocity in meters per second. All right, and we want to make sure that that kinetic energy is in joules. So we're going to need to take that 25 electron volts and multiply by what? You know, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 uh, joules for every electron volt. So we're going to convert that. Uh, it's hard to see that in here. We're going to convert this electron volts. Uh, you'll see you can cancel out here. And you should get a velocity that is in meters per second. This gives you a speed of 2.96 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. It's good, by the way, to kind of look at this answer and see if it makes sense. You see, had this speed been uh, at the speed of light, for example, uh, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8, then that shouldn't make sense because you can't have... Uh, particles moving at the speed of light or exceeding the speed of light. So make sure that it's below the speed of light, otherwise you've done something wrong. So now you know the speed, and, and now it's a matter of just substituting in. Lambda equals h, all right, over mv. m, we're going to be using the mass electron, 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kilograms. The velocity is 2.96 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. So we see we have this all in nice SI units of meters per second and kilograms. So we're going to need to pick the appropriate Planck's constant, and that would be the one with the joules in it, not the electron volts. So 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 34 joules seconds. And you get a wavelength of the electron. So this is, we'll write little e for electron over here. We'll write, uh, I guess, p for photon. And it turns out to be 2.45 times 10 to the power of negative 10 meters. And you notice it's much, much smaller wavelength. So things that have matter are harder to detect their wavelength. Um, in fact, if you're like to throw, say, a baseball through the air, you're going to get like a wavelength of like, to the power of like negative 34 meters. 
that's really 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 small you're not going to be able to uh, measure this incredibly small wavelength uh, but you can do th you can find and actually measure the uh, wavelengths of things that are the size of an atom uh, just a quick overview about five the one thing I would be careful when you're going through this section is units 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 so I would highly highly recommend as you substitute numbers in that you put your units in there see the cancel cancellations occur pick the right value for your constants so that you're getting the right answer and also make sense of your answers and hopefully you know you're not getting something unreasonable like an electron traveling faster than the speed of light alright that's it for example number five